I was genetically blessed with a certain wiring that's very useful in a highly developed market system where there's lots of chips on the table and uh, you know I happen to be good at that game. Ted Williams wrote a book called The Science of Hitting and in it he had a uh, picture of himself at bat and the strike zone broken into I think 77 squares and he said if he waited for the pitch that was really in a sweet spot he would bat 400 and if he had to swing at something on the lower corner he would probably bat 235 and in investing i'm in a no called strike business which is the best business you can be in i can look at a thousand different companies and i don't have to be right on every one of them or even 50 of them so i can pick the ball i want to hit and the trick in investing is just to sit there and watch pitch after pitch go by and wait for the one right in your sweet spot and if people are yelling swing you bum ignore them there's a temptation for people to act far too frequently in stocks simply because they're so liquid. Over the years, you develop a lot of filters. And I do know what I call my circle of competence. So I, I, I stay within that circle and I don't worry about things that are outside that circle. Defining what your game is, where you're going to have an edge, is enormously important. bought the first shares of Berkshire in 1962, and it was a northern textile business destined to become extinct eventually. And uh, it was a statistically cheap stock in a terrible business. Berkshire Hathaway was closing mills, and as they closed mills, it would free up some capital, and then they would repurchase shares. So I bought some stock with the idea that there would be another tender offer at some point, and we would sell the stock at a modest profit. And at one point, the management asked me at what price we would tender our stock, and I said $11.50. And the tender offer came out a few months later, and uh, it was $11.38, it was an eighth of a point cheaper. And that made me very mad, so I just started buying more stock. I just felt that I'd been double-crossed by the management. And, May of 1965, I bought enough so we controlled the company and we changed the management. That was a pretty silly way to behave, as Warren has recounted in retrospect. One of the reasons Warren's successful is he's brutal in appraising his own past. He wants to identify misthinkings and avoid them in the future. But it was an accident that he chose Berkshire Hathaway. If the chairman hadn't tried to cheat him out of an eighth, there wouldn't have been any Buffett dash Berkshire Hathaway history. If you're emotional about investment, you're not going to do well. You may have all these feelings about the stock. The stock has no feelings about you. Looking back, it's interesting that tender offer, I didn't realize it, but it, it happened about five days after my dad had died. And I, whether that had affected me or not, I don't know. Do you remember your last conversation with your father? Yeah, but I don't want to talk about it. I think it just sobered him and hurt him. But Warren soldiers on. Both Warren and I to look at our fathers and see what they did right and what they did wrong. Warren's father was a real old-fashioned right-wing ideologue. And his father was so intense about it that Warren just decided that it was a mistake. It cabbaged up your head to be that much of an ideologue. So he loved his father, but he didn't want to become that much of a true believer in, in anything. <laughs>